so we have with us uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. A.P. Dimri from uh, the School of Environmental Sciences, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, who is an expert on Western disturbances. So uh, we'd like to know from him uh, first uh, what these Western disturbances are, uh, where do they originate from, and how do they travel to India, and what is the significance of them. Yeah. Conventionally, Western disturbances and understood that a synoptic weather system flowing from uh, west of India, med originating Mediterranean or Atlantic origin and traveling in subtropical westerly jet and uh, picking up moisture from there, Caspian Sea and then simultaneously moisture in creation from Arabian Sea which in winter time dumps snow or liquid over the northern Indian region or Indian subcontinent. Generally, the, in a winter months, it's a four to five western disturbances travel and accordingly they pick up moisture and they have a life cycle two to three days or five days. And that's the replenishing of the winter water in the form of the snow for the northern Indian region and that's why it's, it has a huge importance for this subcontinental region. Uh, I'll not go in the past detail and development of western disturbance, it's uh, well understood. I will just only comment a few things on the recent uh, impact of western disturbance due to climate change in per se. Uh, because of the climate change as well debated that temperature are warming and then there are various SSPs, RCPs and business as usual models has come uh, from warming. How these western disturbances behave during the warming time and what we found in due course of time that uh, western disturbances are getting lighter and once they are become lighter by virtue of the more convection coming in uh, more uh, heat coming in they are growing uh, up to the higher elevation than their track in the upper atmosphere upper troposphere and by virtue of these uh, they have more dynamic also and of late, it, it is seen that all western disturbances don't precipitate only few of the western disturbances precipitate it means that there are days when there is no precipitation happening during wds and of the contradictory there are non wd days when precipitation good amount of precipitation is seen almost 30% precipitation has seen over the northern indian region i will come to this non wd precipitation later but when you are talking of the western disturbance in the changing climate of the warming, they are having a distinct structure and dynamical changes has been observed in the western disturbance and collectively subtropical westerly jet and WD, I tell it Indian winter monsoon and like that there is impact and change in the subtropical westerly jet which takes it and that's why we have extratropical and tropical uh, interactions as you mentioned that if it freak, freak western disturbance come in the summer time, we have an interaction with the Indian summer monsoon and that's why the monsoon gets aggravated. We have called it the pulsatory extension of monsoon. When WD comes in the summer time, we have a Pakistan flood, we have Uttarakhand flood. There are many such other incidences when WD also freaked in in the summer time. It's not that they don't care because a tropical westerly jet in summer moves to the northward, running over the Russian region. But sometimes the anomalous shift towards southern latitude over India that brings the western disturbance. Second is the impacts like. Uh, we saw a few days before there is a hailstones have come and the freak western disturbance comes and there is a warming happening that particular day and that warming leads to the manifestation of the hail formation because there is a warming in the lower atmosphere, you have a convection and then moisture brought by the western disturbance which quickly gets to the uh, hail formation and updraft and downdraft and that's what you have a hail formation comes and that's the another important aspect is the impact of WDs on the fog. Whenever there is WD, there are chances of fog manifestation and intensification is seen over this region. So fog will be intensified when there is a western disturbance is coming because of two reasons. Your urban land mass is changing. You have a lot of um, concrete jungles have come. So your surface wind has slowed down because of these sky capos. So you have a stable atmosphere. And as the upper level atmosphere, when you have a moisture laden WD, you have a fog formation happening that has a further implication on the aviation, um, rail, and so and so forth. So the WD in coming time have become a crucial and important from two point of view. One is the replenishment of the northern Indian glaciers to the rivers. If not, then the water will be deficit and what will happen to the water storage over the Indian uh, Himalayan region particularly. And we also have seen the permafrost. Permafrost is also kind of uh, melting off. So if that happened, you don't have the recharge 
by virtue of this western disturbance that's one number two if they are drying in course of time what's going to have the impact in the coming time in the future so these are the few recent uh, studies we are working on that western disturbance Okay, I think in regions like Ladakh, uh, this drying is especially uh, significant. Like cold desert regions of uh, Ladakh, maybe uh, Spiti, Lahaul, all these areas, I think uh, the glaciers are uh, receding very rapidly. So that is one thing. Uh, another thing, another aspect that I would like to know from you uh, would be about the impact of the Arctic warming on Western disturbances. Because uh, the Western disturbances originate somewhere in the Mediterranean and uh, the polar vortex over the Arctic is becoming wavier because of uh, Arctic warming and because of that, uh, is it impacting uh, the Western disturbances and how is it impacting it? Yeah, excellent. Uh, what you said, the polar vortex, when, when we call it Northern Atlantic oscillations. Mm -hmm. So there's a positive oscillation, negative oscillation and accordingly the uh, concurrent circumferent wave uh, across the Arctic is kind of, kind of pushes downward in latitude or northward and like that if it happens, it has a huge impact on the Western disturbance because ultimately that southern propagation of Northern Atlantic oscillation across will push the southern uh, subtropical westerly jet also southern and then you have more chances of the uh, western disturbances so if you have uh, more influence of the northern Atlantic oscillation coming to the subtropical westerly jet there are likely that more number of WDs will be passed through over the region and this is the likely that uh, in the warming scenario you have a northern Atlantic oscillation which come to the southern latitude and by virtue of that you have more subtropical westerly jet will be pushed down southward if that happens and un ultimately then you have more number of WDs coming. And if reverse happens, suppose, then in that case we have less number of more stable atmosphere will be there. So what is a more stable atmosphere and global teleconnection, then it will be weakening from the Western disturbance point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, Western disturbances uh, were there. There were a lot of Western disturbances, uh, Western disturbances beginning from uh, October itself. And uh, first, there was interaction of, as you have uh, said before, interaction of Western disturbances with low pressure areas and caused floods and all. Uh, but another thing that I've observed is back-to-back -back Western disturbances. A lot of times, uh, IMD put out uh, press releases where they said that uh, two Western disturbances are coming at the same time, like back to back. And then uh, sometimes it was three Western disturbances. A lot of times they were not even able to predict that the Western disturbance is a single one or a double one. First they said it's just one and then they said there are two. So uh, what is happening? Are the Western disturbances changing, difficult, getting difficult to predict? Or like what? what yeah, Western disturbance, classical theory says that it is kind of family of Western disturbance that travel together. Mother disturbance and daughter disturbance and mother matures and then decays and then the daughter matures like that and in general that happens basically western disturbance are the um, interaction of the cold and warm air masses mm -hmm. so wherever this such situation conditionally exists the warm air will go up because lighter and when it goes up it will be condensed and simultaneously other thing will happen so generally they travel in a family Yes, you are absolutely, you got it right, that they travel in a family and once the first decays and then the second comes and prediction should not be an issue as far as the winter weather is concerned because convexism is not the issue. It's air frontal interaction, EG2 model, EG2 predict. But sometimes what happens, the variability of western disturbance is much, much larger if you talk on the precipitation point of view. Precipitation variability is too high as compared to the Indian summer monsoon. They are highly variable synoptic weather system but very much predictable but yes sometime what happens when you are focusing on the lead western disturbance which is maturing in view of that the secondary approaching western disturbance is kind of not always captured in the mathematical formulations mathematical models and that is the reason that at time the secondary wd or tertiary wd are not captured in the uh, modeling framework and that is the reason by the time you imbibe the circulation in the second uh, secondary WD or tertiary WD, they are not very well represented. So you have to kind of initiate a fresh uh, simulation or kind of a prediction method for that. Yes, secondary WD, secondary wave of WD. Yeah, that's the true thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah.